You know, there's nothing really better than hopping on a game with your friends and having one of those nights. You know, the ones where it feels like it lasts forever and by the end of it, your stomach hurts from laughing so much. Well, I don't know about you, but it seems like these experiences are few and far between. I mean, let's be realistic. When is this happening in a Valorant or League of Legends game? Those kind of nights to remember happen more in games like Minecraft, GTA, or even Team Fortress 2. Look, the point is, things seem to be a bit different nowadays, and I wanted to figure out why. Why are we all addicted to these glorified rage games? Why are we willing to spend 45 minutes on a game that we'll probably lose? Most importantly, why do we spend so much money on a free game? Well, what I found is a lot deeper than I thought. $70 games seem to be one of the biggest topics of discussion this year. I mean, with the releases of Tears of the Kingdom, Starfield, and Spider-Man 2, people are probably a little confused about what the deal is. While I have already made a video about that topic, I think it ties in well with a discussion discussion about these free-to-play competitive games. It doesn't take a genius to know why all these games are free now. It's clear that a free-to-play multiplayer model will almost always be more profitable than a one-time purchase. Of course, many have tried and failed, but usually if a big company tries it out once, they don't go back. Just take Overwatch 2 for example. The original was a billion dollar company, yet they decided to go free-to-play. In return, they made a hundred million dollars in the first three months. And yes, that is very good for a game that is functionally the same as the original. Obviously, we know how successful successful other games like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone are, so let's not waste any more time on them. I don't really care whether or not a game is free or not, I care if it's good. Let me be clear, I'm not going to spend all video bashing free-to-play games, but I would like to point out that there are examples of free-to-play somewhat hurting good games. The best example of this, in my opinion, is Rocket League. I still firmly believe that this game has one of the best gameplay and ranking systems out of any of these modern competitive games, but I also can't deny that smurfing has hurt it significantly. For those who aren't familiar, smurfing is essentially when highly ranked players play on low ranked accounts for various reasons. Some people smurf in order to play with friends, others just like to see people rage. Regardless, smurfing is nearly always frowned upon in ranked matches. Free to play games suffer the most since you can literally make as many burner accounts as you'd like. Some games like Overwatch 2 don't really have as bad of a time with smurfs due to the team aspect of the game, but Rocket League is typically played in twos, meaning that sometimes you'll just get destroyed by one guy while the other sits in goal. Many games have taken great measures to place these smurfs back in their proper ranks, but it's quite hard to detect sometimes. Free games aren't all necessarily bad though, in fact, I love that they're so accessible to everyone, allowing folks who don't usually play games to participate with friends. Think about how generation defining a game like Fortnite was, now think about if the game had cost money. Who knows how many more kids would have missed out on those classic memories. Of course, most kids ended up spending their parents' money via microtransactions anyway, but the fact is that they wanted to do that only because the game was fun. Besides prices, there's a lot more to why I think modern competitive games are bad. Perhaps my number one reason is the sheer amount of time required to progress in them. A lot of people only have time for one or two hours of gaming a day, especially if they're workers or students. If you want to progress in a game like Valorant, it's a 30 minute plus sacrifice nearly every time, not even counting the queue time, potential dodging, and the character select screens. And if you lose, you'll need to spend another game trying to recoup that loss. And to be honest, Valorant isn't even that bad at progressing you to your correct rank. If you want to see a true grind, go ahead and try and rank up fast in League of Legends. Bringing up Rocket League again, I think that game handles ranking best out of almost all other competitive games, and I think this is for two reasons. Number one, you only need to have one or two good friends to climb together, and number two, Rocket League heavily favors wins and losses over actual gameplay metrics. While that sounds bad, at the end of the day, winning is what matters in a competition. Also, higher ranked players will be able to queue with low ranks, but the matches will be balanced so it won't just be an easy boost to the top. Ultimately, if you deserve a higher rank in Rocket League, you can literally play with a high ranked friend and prove that you're actually that good. I think that if you truly wanted to find the most accurate and fair competitive system though, you'd likely find a strong correlation with the amount of teammates in a game. In my opinion, the most fair ranked game in the whole world is chess. It's 1v1, has rules that never change, and a specific elo for every player. If you lose, it's your fault, but if you win, it's also your fault. Compare that to Overwatch, where if your one tank decides to throw the game, you literally can't win, no matter what. In League of Legends, if one lane feeds the entire game, everyone suffers, not just the person feeding. This lack of control is what ultimately led me to quitting these team-based games and exclusively playing chess.com if I wanted to play a competitive game. I of course have to shout out fighting games as well, since they are genuinely a test of skill between two parties. The whole psychology of these team-based games gets you attached to a result, when in reality you only play about a fifth of 
of a part in a win or loss sometimes. Sure, if you're an extremely skilled player, you can make it out of low ranks with no problem, but eventually everyone gets stuck at a point, especially if you're solo queuing. It's also important to remember that these games will put you in queue with other people who have either been winning or losing a lot, so be prepared to have huge win streaks and huge loss streaks. Truly, this whole process is the equivalent to skill-based gambling, and I was definitely a victim to it for a time. Having your rank increase is literally like a drug being administered straight into your bloodstream, and having that rank decrease is like having that all taken away from you. You get angry and bitter. Gambling is supposed to be for adults, right? Then why are kids nowadays getting addicted to this cycle of wins and losses before they're even in high school? It's a shame too, because this ranking system often tricks people into thinking they're better than they actually are. Kids will neglect their studies, physical health, and their relationships just so they can get closer to virtual validation. I used to care so much about whether or not I was platinum Valorant, looking up aiming tutorials and whatnot. Hours of my day was spent gaming and I didn't even enjoy it. Eventually it all bubbled up and I had enough. Now I mostly play single player games with heavy focus on story and atmosphere, actually playing games for the sake of fun and relaxation. Of course, these games are almost never free, but I'm willing to pay the price for quality. Games are supposed to be an escape from a busy life, a time to un wine from a hard day, or just a place to chill for a bit. I like having the option to just hop in a game, play for a bit, and save it for later. I don't want to feel true anger when I play games. If I wanted that, I could just find that in the real world. Growing up, I played games like Minecraft, Pokemon, and Animal Crossing. These games gave me a feeling of comfort and enjoyment. I never really got too upset with games, and if I got stuck, I would always take a break and try again later. I made so many memories playing games with my mom, or even just alone. This was the case until I entered high school and was introduced to the world of competitive games. As someone who always loved competition but was no good at real life sports, I fell in love with the idea of esports. Finally, I could be the best at something. Well, I got humbled pretty quickly. I had tried my hand at nearly every competitive game, Smash Bros, Valorant, Overwatch, but I wasn't getting anywhere with it. I tried going to Smash Bros tournaments and got destroyed. I got into Rocket League trying to get super good at that, but was again faced with difficulty. I played in a pretty serious Discord League for Overwatch, but how serious can you get when you're ranked Diamond? I pretty much tried to get good at every competitive game and got embarrassed almost every time. This is why my current mentality towards playing these games has changed. Instead of taking them so seriously, I actually play them to have fun. At the end of the day, it's just pixels on a screen, so there's no point in getting so worked up about it. I know it can be incredibly annoying to waste time if you lose a long game, but hey, if you only play to win, that's the risk you take. When you play games to purely have fun, it's like you unlock those fun moments again from childhood. Recently, I've jumped into a game now and then to have some fun with friends, and yeah, honestly, it really is fun again when I don't care much about the results. Earlier this year, I restricted myself to only playing video games one week per month. Everyone called me crazy, but it really did help me focus, and not to mention, whenever I did play games, it was super fun. Now, it's a bit different, considering I've embraced gaming back into my life, but this time, I don't really play games for any serious reasons anymore. If I spend all day writing or editing, I'll spend an hour before bed just chilling out and having fun. In my opinion, this is the best way to game. You aren't sitting at the computer all day wasting away, getting mad at teammates because they suck. To anyone out there who might be mad at me too because I insulted your favorite game, I get it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't play your favorite game anymore, I actually want you to enjoy video games again. You shouldn't be screaming at a screen because you get killed in a game. You shouldn't be getting headaches because you've been sitting on the computer all day, queuing over and over in Valorant. If you're ever wondering why video games aren't fun anymore, just try sitting back, relaxing, and play a game thinking, let's have fun instead of let's win. Ironically, you'll probably end up winning more games because of it.